Okay, welcome back. I think I know what to do now. Um, I don't know how you're supposed to know this, but you do that, I think. Okay. <laughs> there it is. That's a tough one. almost eight o'clock. I wanted to talk about um, Dear Evan Hansen. I guess I finished talking about the politician. I didn't really have that much to say. I just liked it. Um, ben Platt's really good in it. Um, he, I haven't really seen him in anything else. Um, I guess he does a lot of theater stuff. So, about two years ago, I, I mentioned before that I'm, I'm a big Owl City fan. Um, so he, he did a cover of one of the songs in the musical called Waving Through a Window. I'm sorry, I made fun of this guy before. He's a nice guy. Move this box. And you will find your reward. Your eternal reward. <laughs> I still don't really know why he did that cover, or I know that the creators of the play asked him to, but I don't know why. why. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody listened to it other than me. I mean, I guess it led me to the play, which, but he doesn't really have that big of a fan base, so it's weird. Um, I guess this is like a little maze. I need the shovel, he said. Um, I remember listening to it in the car and I thought that um, Adam had wrote, written it. Uh, he's, Adam is the Owl City guy. And I was like, this is really good. <laughs> Um, he, I haven't really liked his recent music, so I was like, oh, he's, he's, this is good, good job. Um, but I still like, uh, he did a good job with the music in that, so, I mean, I, I like, I, I don't want to talk too much about Al City, but, um, I really, I like his music, um, but I used to like his music and his lyrics recently, it doesn't seem like he's really too passionate about creating lyrics anymore. He just likes making music, so his lyrics are not great. Um, so that's how I found out about the musical. And I thought, oh uh, wait. Oh. So I started listening to some of the songs and I was thinking, this is kind of like a, I don't know, I didn't really like the songs that much. They seem kind of generic and um, cliche, I guess.
And I remember listening to a song called For Forever. And I didn't really like it. It was, um, it's still on YouTube. It's, it's Ben Platt on The Colbert Show. And I didn't really like it. I was thinking like, oh, this is another song about a kid who has a friend and he likes his friend and whatever. So I didn't. But for some reason, I still, I don't know. I just, I have, I have nothing to do. <laughs> so I just Googled, um, I tried f finding how to watch the play online. Um, um, I don't know why, I've never done anything like that before. Watching a musical, like a bootleg. I didn't even, I, I don't know how I knew that that was a thing you could even do, but there is a, there's a really good, like, bootleg online that you can watch. Um, the FBI is going to come after me now. Um, And thinking about it now, it's it's weird how much this musical impacted me from just watching a crappy bootleg online. Like I never went to see it or anything. Um. <clears throat> okay, how do I get to the? Oh, I remember. Um, <clears throat> this is gonna be a couple episodes, I guess. And. I, so I watched, I just decided to watch this bootleg. It was like a Saturday morning. I didn't have anything to do. And <clears throat> I was liking the beginning. Um, the part that made me, the part that stuck out to me is like, there, there are a ton of movies and TV shows and plays or whatever about kind of like lonely kids who, high school kids who um, are younger, who are like lonely and, um, okay, now how do I get over there? And I never really connect with those kind of things. I don't, um, I don't f fully understand why. So I guess I, when I was watching this, I was assuming, okay, it's gonna be another one of those things that I don't like, where it's like a kid who doesn't have friend and then friends and then he finds friends and he's happy at the end or, or whatever. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess that's why I always get sad because it's like at the end they get friends and they're happy and uh, I think I know what to do. That didn't happen for me. <clears throat> so the thing that stood out to me when I first watched it was there's one of the first scenes, I guess I might've been thinking to myself like, okay, they're making this kid seem really lonely and depressed, but they have to give him a friend um, because he has to have somebody to talk to all these movies and things. Um, they always, they always make these kids seem like such losers and, and loners and depressed and sad and, but then they always give them a friend. <laughs> and I, I always think like, how, why is he so depressed if he has a friend? Um, oh, I don't know how to do this. And the friend's always super nice to him and, and like there's, they're best friends and they hang out all the time and they like each other and so it's hard for me to connect to a character like that but what they do different in this play is <clears throat> I think it's kind of clever they give him a friend but they make a point about it that he's um, he's a family friend and they've never talked really um, they're not real friends and they don't really become friends throughout the 
play. <laughs> um, they're just kind of together through the circumstances of the what happened. But the, um, they never, they're not really friends. <laughs> and I really like that. <laughs> um, So that was the first thing I noticed that I liked. Um, they do something that I don't relate to. I mean, I understand why they do it, which is that they make the main character he's super nervous and anxious, but but he still talks a lot when he's nervous, um, which I guess a lot of people can relate to, but I, I don't like when I get nervous. I mean, when I'm not nervous, I don't talk that much, but when I am nervous, I talk even less. Um, so I didn't really relate to that. He he he's one of those characters who talks a lot when he's nervous. I I understand. It's like, how can you make a? Where do I go? How can you make something and not have the main character talk at all? <laughs> um, So I understand why they do it, but uh, I wish there was a, another way. I don't know. I guess it's okay. <laughs> oh, really? The play that won best musical is okay. Yes. <laughs> um. So I'm watching the play, and I like it, it's fine. Um, they do the Waving Through the Window song, and it's really good, he's, he's a good singer and everything. <laughs> and um, The part that really got to me, like, more than pretty much anything ever, like any movie or, or TV show that I've ever seen, has ever, um, I don't know if I can even say that I've ever cried this hard ever, like this is the hardest I've ever cried. Um, I mean, that's just, nothing bad's ever happened to me, so I just have never cried really about like, things in my life being bad except for like I guess a couple of times I've cried about like when I was a kid about having anxiety but anxiety it's such like a, a slow burn it's not like I don't know it's it's I wasn't I don't know whatever I, I just I, I don't remember ever crying this hard it was this song for forever, um, and the setup to the song is what makes it so impactful. Because, like I mentioned, I, I listened to it before and I was like, it's, uh, whatever, it's kind of okay. Got to bomb these guys, I think, right? Oops. Ah. Um, ah. So I'll explain the setup, which is, I really like the story to this play too. I think it's a good premise and, and they do a lot of, um, I don't, I don't know. I, sometimes I, I feel like I know a little bit about storytelling, but it seems like a good Good storytelling. I don't know. I got one more left. Got it. Whew, that was close. <clears throat> um. Pegasus boots. Uh. 
Ugh, sorry. Okay, so the song that really got to me was For Forever. So uh, I'll describe like the context is, um, so I'm gonna spoil the whole thing probably. Um, <clears throat> okay, so you already know there's this kid played by Ben Platt. He's a, a lonely kid, um, doesn't have any friends. Um, he's a senior in high school and he's kind of hoping that this year is gonna be different. He's gonna get friends or he's just gonna be happy. Um, and there's this other kid at school, his name is Connor. And he's kind of a loner too. Um, and Evan and Connor meet once in the beginning. And Evan does this thing that his therapist makes him do, which is to write letters to himself. So he says, Dear Evan Hansen, today's gonna be a good day and here's why. Um, And so he, but he writes a letter at the beginning of the play and he says, Dear Hansen, today's not going to be a good day because why would it be better than any other day? It, I'm still the same person. Um, and he prints it out and Connor reads it and he freaks out because he mentions his, his sister. Evan mentions Connor's sister in the letter. And so he freaks out and he takes the letter with him. And then la later that day, I guess, he, he uh, Connor kills himself. And they find the letter on him and they think that it's a letter that Connor wrote to Evan because it says, Dear Evan Hansen, on it. Uh, because, um, I think, I don't know, maybe it's dumb, but I think that's a cool like set up to a story, like without all the anxiety stuff <laughs> that I relate to. Um, so, so Connor kills himself and his parents go to Evan and like, um, we know that you and Connor were friends uh, because we found this letter. I don't remember really what happens, but then Evan says like, I think Connor's parents invite him to dinner and he, so he goes to dinner with Connor's parents. Okay, I think that's right. do this yet um okay here we go so then evan goes to this dinner with connor's parents and at the dinner he kind of he's really nervous about it because he knows that he wasn't friends with connor <clears throat> Far away, do not fear, dash and fly. Oh, I never thought of that. Okay. Um, but he still wants to go because he sees how happy, well, he, he, he feels like the parents need this um, because he knows that Connor didn't have any friends and he thinks it would like crush their parents if he knew the truth. Um, uh, so he goes to the dinner and he's nervous because he doesn't want to say he doesn't want them to find out um, so part of that is him singing this song <clears throat> called For Forever which is basically him lying to Connor's parents about a perfect day that they had together 
Um, and it comes across that. Okay, how do I do this? This is maybe something that Evans thought about a lot. Um, what 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 a perfect day would be like with a friend that he's never had. Um, So yeah, with that context, you can enjoy the song for what it is, I think. And it's, if you're like me, you'll really, it, I think it'll really impact you. <laughs> um, because I guess, I don't know if that's something that I've ever really thought about, like my perfect day with a friend, but it, it's just relatable that like I'd never had a friend and like what would it be like to have one and and, and the fact that he's lying about it um, to make these people feel better and um, I just remember like sobbing, like I could hear myself crying, which is something that I don't think has ever happened before. <clears throat> Um, and I was lucky because my parents, I remember my parents not being there. So, um, if my parents were home, I would have just turned it off right away. Cause I wouldn't want them to come in and see me crying. Um, oh, um, okay. So I have to wait, I have to wait, I have to wait for it to turn off and then, ah, shoot. Oh. Do I have to count how many times it does it? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it does it nine times. Three, four, five, six, seven. No. Okay, so do it at eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, simpler than I thought. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just never remember ever crying that hard. Um, and so basically, I don't really know how good the rest of the play is, because I was just I was just sobbing through the whole thing. <laughs> like, I never cried that long before either. It was, that song's like a half an hour in, and there's two hours more. I was just crying the whole time. So I don't even know how good the rest of the play is. I think it's probably okay, but. <laughs> um, hopefully, I still get that key. Okay, that's a good place to stop, I think. I'll talk more about it tomorrow. I don't know if I, if it's illegal to condone watching a bootleg, but I would, I would condone it. You don't, I don't know, even though it's like a crappy bootleg, it's not, you don't, I don't feel like you don't get the full impact of it if you don't see it in the context of the play. Um, the songs and everything. So, um. And I mean, I, I, I never, I didn't feel bad about it because it's like, I'm never going to go see this Broadway show. It's like sold out and it's like $300 and I'm going to go by myself to New York. I, I don't know. It's crazy. So I didn't feel bad about it. <laughs> um, okay. I'll talk about it more tomorrow.
see you tomorrow.